Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga, and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting games that I played. Now it started off with e4 and I responded with c6, open played f4 here and I went with d5 trying to go for the center after playing c6. Is the main idea here. Uh, here my open places e5 trying to push the pawns further and now I have got control of the light squares. Uh, my opponent has got control of the dark squares. Uh, so, which means a uh, light square bishop is something I want to trade off and make use of my dark square bishop. Here I played a bishop to f5, opponent plays d4, making sure that I can't push my pawns forward. Uh, and then I went with h5. Now, h5 is to restrict opponent from playing g4 because it is supported with the queen. So, you always want uh, to place your bishop here, not to make sure that it is kicked away. So that's why I played h5. Also, it's aggressive, trying to go towards the king side early in the game. Now, if you are liking this already, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, I am making videos daily uh, and it has a lot of unique and interesting content as well. Now, let's continue with this game. Uh, opponent plays knight f3 and I played e6 here, trying to make sure that my dark square bishop uh, is ready to go out now. Even queen's diagonal is free. Uh, here my opponent plays bishop d3. Now I can trade off the bishop uh, or I can uh, let that be and then take back with the pawn, which spoils my pawn structure. So instead, I went with bishop onto g4, which pins the knight as well temporarily. Open plays pawn forward to h3. I take on the knight here. Open takes back with the queen. And I went with queen h4. It's, it's a check. Now, it was to make sure that uh, even if my opponent plays pawn forward here, which is the best move, I can then get back my queen. And now what I have gained is my opponent won't be castling on the king side. Uh, the pawn structure has weakened up. So castling there would be uh, very tough. But instead, in the game, when I went with queen h4, uh, my opponent gives away the queen exchange, offers me queen exchange. And I uh, take that happily because... After my opponent takes with the king, now the opponent's castling rights are gone. And I've seen many players are dependent on castling. Uh, they have an idea that they have to castle and put the king to safety. And then they panic if they're not able to do it. So I just tried to play on that point. And after that, I went with a knight d7, preparing to play c5 next. So that once my opponent takes, I can take back with the bishop. Uh, opponent plays a knight c3, and then I played c5. Open tries to save the pawn there. I took, opponent takes back. And then I place my dark square bishop onto c5, exchanging the bishops. Opponent denies that and places knight backwards so that if I take now uh, the dark square bishop, open can take back with the knight with momentum. And then maybe push pawns forward, trade, and then the opponent would be gaining control of the queen side. I went with a6, preventing bishop to b5 so that my knight is not pinned. Uh, after a move like c3, which my opponent played to make sure that the bishop is uh, consolidated there, I played knight e7, trying to hop in to maybe f5. Here my opponent plays pawn forward again, trying to kick my bishop backwards. So I thought I'll take rather, and opponent takes back with the pawn, and then I went with a knight to c6. Hitting a couple of pawns here, opponent can is already defending this one, but uh, on b4 it's not defended. Now open plays a3 to defend it. And I went with g6, trying to make sure that my pawn structure is pretty solid. Open gets the rook onto c1 on the empty file. And I also get my rook onto c8. Open takes on the pawn here. That was sacrifice, which was a weird one. Because after I take, there's nothing happening. So open lost a the bishop there, trying to create something out of nothing. And then uh, rook to c3. Uh, and I went for castling so that my king is safe. Uh, the pawn structure is pretty good. My king is now on, on to safety. Open doubles up with the rooks. And I went with knight uh, uh, d to b8, the, defending the knight again. And my open plays pawn forward to a4. Now, uh, the best move here is to go back to e7, uh, which I thought that I can, but then I'm allowing my opponent to come here. And I wanted to be a bit more aggressive because I saw something else. What I saw was I can take on the pawn and then I have a fork coming. So that's what I did. I took on the pawn, which was a bad move actually, because opponent takes. 
and I did a fork, which was nice, of course. And then I grabbed the rook, and then my opponent takes on my uh, rook as well, which I take back. My opponent takes back with the knight. However, it could have been worse for me if my opponent here takes my knight uh, and keeps the rook in the game. Because my rook isn't that active, I cannot take the control of the open file. Meanwhile, my opponent has the uh, control here. Which could have been a bit tricky, but it's equal material. You never know what happens from there as well. Uh, but should have played technically more better. Then I took on the rook, my opponent takes the knight, and I went with knight to c6. Opponent plays knight here uh, on to b3, and I push pawn forward because it is defended with my knight. Uh, now opponent can come to c5 at best, but I don't care what my opponent is doing. My uh, way would be to go with the king and uh, push the pawn forward, uh, grab, and then move towards uh, the other the opponent king. Maybe my opponent plays g3. I play king to e7. King moves, uh, just trying to a uh, waiting move, just to make sure the position is solid for the opponent. Opponent was looking for a draw because uh, the opponent was lower rated, though he didn't play like lower rated opponent here, there, except for the sacrifice. Uh, it was pretty solid game. Uh, and then opponent repeats the move. I took on the pawn. Opponent takes back. Uh, and then I push my pawn forward to g5. Opponent repeats. And then I went with king to f7. Opponent goes to e3 here again, repeating. And I went with uh, king g6. Here my opponent gets with the knight uh, controlling the pawn, attacking the pawn now. Uh, so I went with king f5. Opponent plays pawn forward, trying to dislodge me from there. I took, opponent takes back. Now the pawn is weak and I can take. My opponent also can take a weak pawn. Now we have three pawns, but the advantage is my king is closer to my pass pawn, to the pass pawn. And I'm also controlling the e7, which is the, in the way of uh, pawn promotion uh, for white. I sidestep with the king. I had a choice here, actually. I thought maybe king uh, f5 is better. But it wasn't because then open can give a check. And once that happens, I will be pushing it backwards. Uh, I'm not making progress in the game. Making progress in the end game is very important. Uh, so instead of coming uh, down, I thought I'll just go up, uh, making sure that I have a passage for my pass pawn. Uh, that's why I king to h4, open plays knight g7. I push my pawn. Uh, and open started pushing the pawn as well, feeling the pressure of it. Didn't realize that he has to stop my pawn as well because I am controlling uh, in the the middle uh, uh, the path of the pawn which has been going to be promoted. Here I push my king further onto h3. Open plays knight f5. Uh, probably the last blunder I would say uh, that gives me advantage to push my pawn further. Now opponent if takes of course loses because I have a knight extra. I can grab this pawn any day and then push. Uh, with the H A pawn, uh, but my opponent played pawn forward. Now this is again a deflection te technique in chess where you deflect your opponent's defender, and that's what I did. I took on the pawn, and that's a big deflection for my opponent. He has to take. If he doesn't take, then I'm anyway uh, going to proceed with the pawn. So opponent took on the knight, and I pushed the pawn forward. Here again, this pawn now cannot be stopped from queening because I've already reached uh, G two. If it had to be stopped, my open king had to be there uh, trying to safeguard the queening square. But now even if king to f2 is played, I can just place uh, h2 there and then promote. So this is completely winning and that's what happens. I promote to queen. And then again, I have to make sure that I don't give a sneak in to the opponent because two pawns and a knight are still there in the game. I tried to give a couple of checks. And then eventually I've got my queen to a square where from where I can take a pawn. Uh, even if knight has moved, I can grab one pawn. So uh, open saves the king. I took the pawn. Uh, open goes back here. I just try to clear uh, my path for the rook pawn here. And then I just keep pushing. Uh, open again had to save the knight, which the open denies to. I take and open goes in front of the pawn, which is even further bad because it doesn't matter. I just have to place my queen there. And then lose the control of the pawn, which I trake, and here my open resigns. Uh, anyways, it was going to end in a bad way, so open thought resigning is better. I hope you like it. Uh, do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel. 
uh, it's taking some time daily to make these videos. Uh, but I enjoy chess. I love chess and I hope you all do. So if you are a chess lover, you would subscribe to it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.